day lords and ladies and welcome back to Diablo 4. So today we are talking about my best guess about what the end game can be for a minion necromancer in season 5. You guys, this has been a rough season for the minion necros, but I have been working extremely hard to do my very very best to bring to you guys an option for an end game guide. So we are going to talk today about the Endgame Blood Summoner. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. To start, I am going to tell you right off that this is super gear dependent. So, making this work is a question of luck and infinite grinding. But to talk about our armor here, the first thing we are going to be doing is running on Dariel's Visage. You are also going to be running Tyriel's Might. And Kuro's Embrace. I need to re-roll this, but ideally, uh, you would, would like to get a pair like mine that has the greater affix on max life. You'll be running the Blood Moon Breaches. And we're going to talk about our, our three teeny tiny little aspects for this build. On your boots, you'll be using the aspect of Occult Dominion for our minions. And for... The stats on it, the thing that you really want to focus on is Essence per second. And ideally, with maximum life and movement speed, you're going to temper for movement speed and curse size. For our weapon, we will be using Doombringer. And our amulet, the Banished Lord's Talisman. Then, yet another mythic. I know, guys, I'm sorry. Like, this is so gear dependent. Ring of Starless Skies is going to be our next thing before we talk about our next teeny tiny aspect. On our legendary ring, we'll be putting the Blood Bathed Axe aspect. And uh, the main thing that you do want to focus on here is going to be Essence on Kill, with ideally Crit Strike Chance, Overpower Damage, Tempered for Resource Cost Reduction, and Crit Damage. Our final aspect goes on our shield here, which is the aspect of the Cursed Aura. And uh, because you do take a pretty heavy armor hit from not using Shaco for this, you are going to want to temper it for total armor to get yourself over the cap. And uh, this is actually bricked. I don't use Corpse Tendrils on this, but I haven't gotten a better shield. Uh, good things to focus on for the shield, again, would be max life and uh, crit damage or overpower damage, but I have not gotten a better shield for this, so this is how we're working. So uh, move right along here to our Army of the Dead, or to our Book of the Dead. We are going to be using the Reapers to give us the bonus Corpse Chance. You're going to be using uh, the Cold Mages uh, that apply Vulnerable when they attack, because that is going to be basically our only way to apply Vulnerable. And we are sacrificing the Blood Golem for the maximum life percentage up. Let's talk about our skill tree. So for our skill tree, you'll be putting two points into Hemorrhage, going down to Blood Surge. We're going to be putting a metric ton of points into Blood Surge. Um, and you're going to be taking uh, the Paranormal Blood Surge uh, for the Overpower stacks. Three points into Hued Flesh. And grab three points into Blood Mist. This is your emergency, you know, oh crap button. Going up to Ghastly Blood Mist to leave behind a body every one second. Because again, the corpse is very important. Three points into Skeletal Warrior Mastery, Grim Harvest, and Fueled by Death before we go down here. Where we are going to pick up uh, Iron Maiden, going into Enhanced Iron Maiden. You don't need these. Um... Grab three points in Death's Embrace, three points in Skeletal Mastery, and uh, three points in Amplify Damage, and you are going to take the Decrepify points, just one of each going down into Abhorrent Decrepify for the lucky hit chance to reduce your cooldowns. Over here, we are going to be taking three points into all of these with just two into Drain Vitality because I've diverted some points into Help and Commander, but you're going to be taking all of the points into the uh, blood skills before we duck down here. Uh, we don't have a good way to heal our minions because Cure's Embrace basically use up, uses up everybody that you have all the time, always. 
So, because this is not a skill-dependent build at all, like, this is a Blood Surge build, you are going to be using Blood Surge and more Blood Surge. I have taken Army of the Dead just because if something terrible happens to our minions, we can res them. And then we're going to grab three points in Inspiring Leader and three points in Hellbent Commander before we take our capstone, Rathmos Vicar. Ducking down into our Paragon board. Our first Glyph Socket is going to be Corporeal. And you're going to lead this up into the Blood Begets Blood board. So you're going to be grabbing the Glyph Socket and Socketing Exploit here. And peeling out in every direction. Let's uh, go over here to the right first. Where you'll be grabbing Bloodbath and Socketing Essence. Which goes down to the Scent of Death board. Where you'll be Socketing Dominate. Continuing to creep over to the right, you're going to grab Hulking Monstrosity because it gives you a nice easy path to one more Glyph Socket where we'll be socketing Imbiber. And then if we go back to the Blood Get Bigots Blood board and go north, you will find the Cult Leader board where we are going to sneak up here to grab Dead Razor with just a couple of little points uh, for our minions. I do have an extra point here into damage reduction for them because they do get bullied. And finally, if we sneak over to the left, you'll find the Flesh Eater board, where we have socketed Amplify. So, that is what the endgame Blood Summoner looks like. And we're going to waste no time actually showing you a little bit about what it can do. Uh, we're going to start with paying a visit to uh, my, my favorite tormented boss, who aggressively hates me, even though I feel strongly we should be friends. Okay, so here we are. And because, uh, as always, I will tell you up front that one of the weaknesses of Blood Summoner has always been single target damage, we are going to boost ourselves. Uh, these are usually the boosts that I use when I'm playing the Elixir of Destruction, the Chorus of War, and the Blessed Guide. We'll go on ahead and apply all of those. And uh, go say hello to Andariel, shall we? So you're going to start with Hemorrhage to put a couple of Blood Orbs onto the ground before you actually start your attack against her. That's dead. Now she snubs me again. Oh no. Wow, look at that. Andariel actually showing up for the first time ever. She gave me my first mythic uh, the other day, but that is going to be a resplendent spark, because I have both of these, but eh, nice little Andariel's visage from Andariel. How appropriate. Okay, so when you're talking about an endgame build for Season 5, of course, the bare minimum of what any endgame build has to be able to do in order to properly call it endgame is to clear a tier 7 infernal horde. And we are actually resetting because my RNG on the one that I started ordering has been so terrible that I'm getting no aether at all. That's probably uh, one of my favorite parts about the infernal hordes is uh, your uh, collection is completely dependent on RNG. Completely. Okay, so let's reset that monologue. Starting with, like I said, of course, you're going to want to hit him with the hemorrhage a little bit to drop a couple of blood orbs to boost your damage before you initiate the uh, blood surge spam. So there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind with the endgame blood summoner. It is 
a possible build for season or for uh, tier seven, but you are going to face some resistance with single target damage. That's just remained a part of the blood summoner process that I really have not found a way to solve yet. It's just it's just not that strong for single target, but for AOE clearing, especially with Tyrael's might boosting, uh, with those little bolts that you're seeing, you know, all on the whole of holy bolts of season four. You are still getting good AoE clearing, even though we're not running the uh, Death Speaker's Pendant for this. The advantages that you have in Tier 7 is that you are effectively unkillable. Like, you are basically indestructible with the Blood Summoner. And while it is not the fastest clearing build, it is going to be quite reliable. To get you what you need, if you're not focused on doing the most meta, most damaging thing that exists. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you guys, there's just been not a whole lot going on for Necromancer in Season 5, which is why it's taken me so long to put a video out, is that I've kind of been on my own to figure out what the end game of what, uh, what the end game of season 5 looks like for me. So after infinite farming, and uh, frankly being extremely lucky, uh, just like sh I'd like to shout out Grigor actually this season, is uh, my personal hero who has been dropping mythics for me like crazy. For which he will always have my eternal gratitude. And with no really better direction, uh, we decided that this season was going to be the season that I figured out how to take the Blood Summoner formula and bring it into the end game. I love it, but there's still 10 seconds left in the round and I'm not worthy of having any freaking game reruns. It's my favorite that this game goes.
loving all of these stuns. That's what season five has brought to me, a fresh uh, hatred of being crowd controlled. With one minute to do my very best and getting CC'd by everything on the map. Lovely. My hatred of the elites has gotten so much more intense. Like, I, I can't take the time to hunt that down. It's going to be such a problem for the entire round. So we're off to the council, we are going to reapply for Okay, so it's 
so as I said, the first thing you're going to want to do is start with cursing and um, applying your hemorrhage to get a couple of blood orbs to boost your t total damage against the bosses. It's a small thing that is going to help a little bit with your single target because the Fell Council does possess quite a lot of health. So nice of Gellum to be hanging out here for a second. So the upside is that uh, you will never run out of essence and you can't die, but it's not the fastest clearing on single target with uh, this build, so it may take you a second to clear the spell council, but you can do it in complete peace and safety. They literally don't have the DPS to kill you. Now you can see one of the things here, if you look uh, over to the, uh, right there, that we are getting the advantage of by having our minions with us. The Reapers on Gelub are creating bodies, and Cure's Embrace are, is detonating those with one surge, so we are still getting an incremental amount of damage on anything that the Reapers happen to be fighting. While we burned out Mothra. The slow and patient way for somebody who likes their minions and doesn't mind taking a little bit of extra time to do the activity to have them. Okay, so on a strategy level, we are going to switch our attention over here to Grim because he does not move around a whole lot, whereas Gelub likes to dance. So he is going to come passively into our AoE range throughout the fight and just take more damage. So from a strategy standpoint, I like to target Brent here and Gellum will come close enough for the AoE from time to time. Take the time that he's not actively summoning on us to make a couple of blood orbs. See, when he's doing shenanigans like this with like the blood, the blood tornadoes and stuff, you're going to want to maintain uh, focus on the blood surge so you're getting your health back. You just wait for him to take a second uh, to, to use your hemorrhage to get some more blood orbs to fight him. Gellub does everything in his power to be uncooperative. And I do know that the other reason that you need to, you know, take the water room seriously is that that is really the only way that we have available to uh, heal our minions. So being diligent about the water room is going to be mandatory, I'm afraid. Annoying part where chase 
skeleton on there right now. A quite easy tier 7 clear with the endgame blood summoner. So there you have it, lords and ladies. That is my version of the end game for the minion necromancer in season five the end game blood summoner i do hope that you have enjoyed watching and i wish you all the best in collecting all of the gear that is required to make this work but once you have it it is tremendously fun thank you all so much for joining me and i will see you next time <laughs>